This is my 2006 Jetta TDI. And this one's been on P100 all its life. You don't go under the hood, you don't call your mechanic, you don't do anything, you just fill up and drive. I haven't been to a gas station to fill up since January of 2002. Thank you. Lyle Estol is the founder and president of Piedmont Biofuels. I got tanks, I got drums. His Pittsburgh, North Carolina company has been manufacturing biodiesel for the better part of a decade. We are a community scale biodiesel project that collects waste, fats, oils, and greases from within about 50 miles of our plant and we turn it into biodiesel. It's about as exciting as sucking out a grease dumpster. And then we distribute that biodiesel back out into about the same 50 mile circle to our cooperative. And then we also sell some of our output to oil companies. Biofuels fall into two main categories. The most common type is ethanol, which is typically corn-based and mixed with regular gasoline. And then there's biodiesel, which comes from a variety of vegetable and animal byproducts. It smells good today. You're not here on a day when we're rendering fish. Piedmont Biofuels manufactures B100, or 100% biodiesel. This is what biodiesel looks like. This is the fuel phase, and this is a cocktail of products which drops out of the reaction. Okay, Kiwi. Estel, whose official title is VP of Stuff, I want you to be biologically successful. is not your typical energy executive. I'm gonna put you up there. Without any prior business experience in big oil or transportation, Estel started brewing fuel in his backyard. So I was deep frying turkeys in the backyard. That's something we do in the South, and it's a culinary delicacy, but when you're done, you end up with four or five gallons of used cooking oil. And when you take that used cooking oil and dump it in the woods, it attracts attention from bugs and dogs and vermin of all sorts, and there's good energy there, so it just seemed very wasteful to me. So the natural recycler in me caused me to start making fuel in a blender to run my tractor on. And at one point we decided to go commercial, which is where we are now at our industrial space. And this is a one million gallon per year biodiesel plant. The United States is the world's leading consumer of oil. We use over 350 million gallons of gasoline every day. That reliance on oil comes with a cost to our environment in the form of sulfur and carbon dioxide emissions. We have an emissions profile that is about 80% better than petroleum diesel. And that's one of the big drivers of biodiesel is air quality. Estel hopes his company can reduce dependence on fossil fuels while conserving natural resources and strengthening local communities. One of the reasons I'm an advocate of people making their own fuel is that energy should be produced where it's consumed. In the Piedmont view of the world, we would see the next 100 million gallons of fuel not come from a 100 million gallon plant in the harbor, but rather from 100 little million gallon plants. We should put one on the edge of every town and we should power it with the wastes that come out of that community. In the Piedmont region of North Carolina, that means everything from plants to poultry fat. When we opened this plant, we were running on virgin soybeans. When soybean oil became cost prohibitive, we switched to poultry fat. When poultry fat became too expensive to use as a biodiesel feedstock, we switched to what we're on now, which is waste, which we collect from restaurants after they're done frying food with it. Estel's biodiesel recipe includes striking a balance between energy invested and energy returns. It's very important that the number of fossil BTUs that go into a gallon of fuel be significantly less than the, the number of renewable BTUs that come out of that gallon. And if it's not, let's not do it. A BTU is a British thermal unit and it's the amount of energy that you would get in one wooden match. So if you were to strike a wooden match and let it burn from end to end, that's one BTU. So we have about 133,000 BTUs worth of energy in every gallon of biodiesel. When you add up all of our inputs, they really need to end up as being less than 133,000 per gallon, or we probably shouldn't waste our time making that gallon of fuel. And right now, for every fossil BTU that goes in at Piedmont Biofuels, we get about seven renewable BTUs back out. That's a pretty good rate of return. Part of being a sustainable business is staying in business. Every drop of fuel that comes out of this plant is sold before it's even made. 
Even though they are not tied to global crude oil markets, the company prices their fuels slightly above the market value for petroleum. Generally, price has not been the lever that drives biodiesel consumption. Really, the big lever is clean air. The theory is that since Piedmont only produces a million gallons a year, they need to supply the people who are really committed to the product, not just those looking for a price break. One time, we were selling our product for $3.50 a gallon, and we thought that was a fair price. And petroleum went up to $3.50, and then it went to $4, and then it went to $4.50, and we held. And it turns out that that was a disaster. We had our, sort of our own personal Mad Max on our hands with all these people coming, and we were cleaned out between 9 and 9.15 on a daily basis. And we decided at that point that we would always stay close to the price of petroleum so that we could keep the cheap fuel crowd away. Members of the co-op pay a $50 annual fee. Some come for the lower sulfur emissions, others to get away from what they call big oil. Once you get on your own fuel, you're free. When the deep water horizon well was gushing and people were coming home to images of pelicans on the evening news, our phones were ringing off the hook. Estel has no plans to compete with the big oil companies. Instead, he hopes to inspire other communities that small is possible. You know, we're not that large. We're not powering all of North Carolina. We're powering Pittsburgh, North Carolina, population 3,500. Are we going to replace all of the energy provided by fossil fuels? Nope. So what are we doing? We're demonstrating a different way of being and what is possible.